I can't say that I regret doing three languages at the same time, but if I had the discipline, I would focus on one now. Hi, Steve Kaufman here, and uh, today I want to talk about my experience in learning or trying to learn several languages at the same time, a subject I've talked about before. Uh, remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, uh, click on the bell for notifications. Uh, if you follow me on a podcast service, uh, please leave a review. So I've talked about this before, and it's a subject that comes up a lot. People who do learn several languages at the same time, or would like to learn several languages at the same time. Is it a good idea, not a good idea, and so forth. So I have tended to say it's best to focus on one language. However, there are advantages to trying to learn more than one language at, at one time. And basically that's sort of the experiment that I embarked on, it's gotta be three years ago, where I said, I'm gonna learn three Middle Eastern languages, Turkish, Arabic, and Persian or Farsi. And my reason for doing that was, first of all, the reasons were one, I didn't want to go, I know it takes a long time to learn any one language. So if I were to focus on Arabic, then for two years, I would not do any Persian or Turkish. So if I were to learn all three languages, it might take me six years or more to achieve any kind of a level in any one of them. So I said, well, if I go three months on one, three months on the other, you know, I kind of maintain all three of them. I won't move along as quickly but I won't forget as much. And so that's kind of what I've been doing for the last three years. Uh, I decided to stop the Turkish because uh, one of the obstacles for me in Persian and in Arabic was simply the writing system. The problem, the difficulty in learning a writing system is not so much learning what the different symbols or characters or letters represent. It's actually training your brain to read uh, and to convert you know, writing into meaning instantly the way we do in our own writing system. And it's just an awful lot harder. Uh, I, I still find it easier to read in Czech or Polish than in Russian or Ukrainian, even though I speak Russian certainly a lot better than Czech. Uh, you, you can't sort of discount the sort of sense of familiarity with a script that we grew up with. And uh, of course, you know, the Cyrillic script is essentially parallel to the Latin script, so it's not that difficult to learn. Uh, on the other hand, Persian and Arabic present me, at least they were difficult for me. So I said, okay, I'm going to focus on them and leave the Turkish. So I've been doing that. And I would say that really my progress has suffered. Uh, I have a, a smattering of certainly Arabic and Persian. Not only that, in Arabic, I've decided to expose myself to Levantine Arabic and uh, Egyptian Arabic, which also introduces a level of confusion. But on, and, and the reason I'm doing that is that I want to be able to understand movies from Lebanon, movies from Egypt, and um, Arabic-speaking people, they speak their own dialect to each other, and they somehow manage to communicate across different dialects, with the exception of people from North Africa. So I kind of feel if I'm doing my Arabic thing, then I should kind of be familiar with Levantine Arabic and Egyptian Arabic. And actually the two, Egyptian and, and Levantine, are closer to each other than they are to standard Arabic. But you still need the standard Arabic in order to read, in order to understand, you know, radio, political podcasts and things of that nature. So my Arabic is kind of at a standstill. Uh, Persian, I think I'm doing better at. Uh, I have, it's more comfortable, easier for me to speak in Persian when I speak to my tutor. But there's no question that if I were to focus on one, I would be much, much further ahead. And so then I say to myself, okay, why don't I just focus on Persian now and try to get it up to a decent level? Uh, but then of course there's always that, geez, you know, I come across an interesting something in Levantine Arabic. Uh, in fact, I bought a book recently um, on uh, Levantine Arabic grammar and Le Levantine Arabic verbs. And it's fun kind of to leap through that. So it's kind of hard to let go, but I probably should. And no sooner have I done that than I, I was scheduled to have a, 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 an interview or a conversation with 
uh, a YouTuber who speaks uh, Japanese and Turkish. So I said, geez, I better brush up on my Turkish. So I go back to my Turkish and after an initial three months focused on Turkish, I did have an exit video, as I call it, in Turkish, where I actually was able to speak. I couldn't do that now. Uh, but then I go back to Turkish, go back to the mini series, go back to a bunch of stuff, and I realize just how much I have forgotten, and also how many words there are for me to learn. So I kind of know we're in Turkish, uh, not where I would like to be in Arabic, a little closer where I, I, to where I would like to be in Persian. And now it, it turns out that I have an interview or a, a discussion with someone from Korea. And so I said, you know what, I should try to brush up my Korean. I've spent a lot of time on Korean over the years, on again, off again. And it's really not at a level that I would like. I'm sure if I, if, you know, when I have been in Korea, I can have sort of casual conversation with people. I do have theoretically a large passive vocabulary, but in fact, I struggle. So I've been doing a bit of Korean, plus I'm down here in Palm Springs again. You can see my fake bookshop behind me. And we're at a golf course, and there's a large group of young Koreans here who are, uh, this is sort of like their golf camp with their instructors and everything. So I like to go and chat a bit and, uh, and uh, watch them hit the ball and see if I can imitate them. So the Korean is back. So, like, there, there's just no end. And so then the question really is, is it really worthwhile doing all of this? Why bother? And so I think the question of whether you should learn more than one language at the same time, or even as a polyglot, even if you're not doing it at the same time, you are entertaining, you are balancing like this, this uh, you know, uh, juggler who's got all these balls in the air. Uh, obviously you can't maintain them all, you know, you're catching stuff that's falling down, you can't maintain them all at the same, at the same level. Um, so then you, I think it very much depends on the, the sort of, uh, you know, what your needs are at, at any given time. And I definitely enjoy exploring languages. Even the little bit of Turkish that I have, I'm very happy that I've, I've, I've done that. I'm happy because I enjoy when I go back to Turkish and I hear the sounds of Turkish. Uh, when I watch a series in Turkish, I get a bit of a sense of what they're talking about or the odd word here and there. And I'm very happy that I, that I did that. I'm very happy that I did what I did in Korean, even though it's not quite where I would like it to be. So uh, I think that the simple answer is, you know, should you study more than one language at the same time? Or even should you study more than one language? Should you focus on one language and try to be as good as you possibly can be in that language? That's in, I, I, finally, you know, in the end, that's up to you. I, I very much applaud people who want to become as good as they can be in language X. But at the same time, uh, it's such a wonderful thing. And I think back to uh, that great, gentle giant, Moses McCormick, who tragically you know, died at a very young age, but whose life was spent exploring all kinds of unconnected languages from every corner of the world and probably not achieving, you know, C2 or anything in any of those languages, but certainly capable of handling uh, conversations in a variety of languages. So it depends what you want to do. You want to explore, you want to be a perfectionist. Uh, but if you want to do well in the language, then I certainly think you have to focus. And uh, I can't say that I regret doing three languages at the same time, but if I had the discipline, I would focus on one now. I would go and focus on Persian and get it up to a really good level uh, and then go back in and pick up the pieces uh, of my Arabic or, or, or Turkish. Uh, and uh, I've still got pieces to pick up in uh, Korean and Czech and Greek and Romanian. And so that, in a sense, comes with the territory. If you're going to be a polyglot and enjoy exploring languages, you're never going to be satisfied uh, with your level in any of them but you're going to enjoy them all. So, just a bit of a ramble uh, on the subject of studying more than one language at the same time. Thank you for listening. I, I hope you find that useful. And I think I'll leave you my exit videos after th three months of Persian and three months of Turkish. And uh, of those two, I think I've improved in Persian since then. I haven't improved in, in Turkish.
Bye for now.